In this video, I'm going to be giving you kind of a, a general overview of what makes a good defense in Madden. I have some kind of key points that I want to touch on and really use the the current defensive meta or the current, in my opinion, and, and really pretty much every year, the best defense in the game, and that is dollar. Now, the way we're going to set this up is we're going to have auto flip defense play call off. We're going to have our auto alignment on base. And we're going to be basically basing out of this double safety defense. Now, the reason why dollar is good is because one of the first principles of a good defense is you have to have the ability and capability to be able to consistently get pressure. If you can get pressure, you can play defense. That is why the first and really cornerstone centerpiece foundational piece that has to be true of any great defense in Madden history has to come down to pressure. That is that is fundamentally a non-negotiable, and it has to be true. Because if you can't get pressure, then the opponent will have um, – there, there's, there's no, like there's, – there's, there, they can throw everything off timing. Now, I will say – that one of the most underrated things about Madden 25 is because of Switch Stick. Switch Stick has now allowed us to use coverage as a form of pressure. And what I mean by that is you're able now for the first time that I know of to basically use your Switch Sticking as a way to disrupt the timing of routes, uh, which is which I think is really, really good. So um, I don't love switch stick as a whole, but I love that it gives the defense more tools in their toolkit. So the first element of any good defense is pressure. And the second and a very close element of, I think, good, uh, good, consistent defense is the ability to make every defense, specifically your max coverage defense, and your max pressure defense look basically exactly identical. That was one of the longest developing corner routes I've ever seen. So you want to be able to make your blitz and your coverage and your hopefully in your run defense, you want to make sh every single defense that you run, you want it to look identical. And the reason that this matters is because one of the only things that we can control defensively is we want to basically dis the whole idea is we're doing two things we're trying to constrain as much space as possible and then we're trying to disrupt the timing of the quarterbacks uh, the quarterbacks combos so we can disrupt timing through pressure and in this year's game we can make them hold the ball slightly longer with our switch stick now Another big principle that I'm a huge believer in, in both Madden and in college football 25, is the idea that we want to, the, the basic concept that we want to, for lack of a better way of explaining this, like we want to make them work, we want to make them have to have long drives, and we, what we're trying to, and this is another thing that pressure does, we're using our pressure, we're using our coverages, we're using our switch stick, all as mechanisms in which we can make the opponent make a mistake. We're trying to get them to make mistakes, okay? Um, that's why it's so important to make everything look the same. That's why a blitz is kind of the fundamental cornerstone piece that you need to have in order to be effective. And then also, that's why we're we're kind of trying to disrupt timing to force mistakes. Super big piece, okay? That's also why we're changing the picture post snap. But one of the biggest things is we will we will significantly increase our likelihood that our opponent is going to make a mistake if we make everything look the same pre-snap so they can't get any tells of what we're doing. Right? I wonder if I can throw this. This is kind of a new dot that a lot of people are doing. I think that's a, I don't think, I think that's against the deep halves. But if you're not throwing seam streaks, you're not playing offense right, in my opinion. Okay, so let's kind of recap some of the things we talked about, and we'll kind of talk about what I like to do with, with the rest of my defense. So so the, the first thing is every good defense has to have a blitz component. 
a it's a Sen three, a Sen four, a Sen five, or even a Sen six pressure that is going to force the offense to have to adjust to that blitz. In this year's game, and in dollar. Dollar is also underratedly good because it oftentimes has the most amount of ways that you can blitz possible because you can blitz from different angles and things like that. In this year's game, Dollar specifically has probably the best all-in-all send four because it can it can scream right through the middle untouched at the quarterback. So Dollar has one of, if not the best ways to get pressure in this game. We also want to always make everything that we're doing on defense look identical so that they don't know what we're doing with our blitz. They don't I what I've actually liked about this year's game, one of the things that I like the most, there's no identifier in the game. So what we want to try to have happen is we don't want them to see there you see there's the hard flats. Uh, we don't want them to see where we're usering, right? We don't want them to know oh, he's using the linebacker every single time because occasionally we might want to tweak that or switch that up. So I like to – if you move the user down in the A-gap and hold him there, they know that you're using him. Now, I will say if you're using him every time, that's not a big deal. But I'm just saying the concept, make every defense look the same. This is why Dollar is also really effective for defending the meta because Dollar – does not – you don't have to flip the formation uh, if the offense has a different alignment. It can line up the same no matter the formation, which is one of the most underrated reasons as to why dollar is as good as it is because it can – you don't ever have to – you don't have to flip dollar to align better to the formation. It's a symmetrical formation. So it's another thing that I really like about it. Okay. Um, as far as the rest of the things, we talked about switch stick and we talked about basically like using our pressure to kind of disrupt timing. One of the things that I really am a, a big believer in, it looks like he's going to throw a bubble screen every time. Um, I'm a huge believer in making the offense work. And I want to expand a little bit on that principle. So when I say make the offense work, you might be like, Cody, kind of what are you talking about? How does that actually, you know, how do you do that, right? So the way that I like to explain the idea of making the offense work is through the lens of basically using basketball. I want to take away the layup throws and the three-pointers. So I don't want to give up wide open layups, wide open duck dunks. And I also simultaneously, I don't want to give up like wide open three-pointers. I want you to have to beat me in the mid-range game. That is why normally my base my base defense what i want to do defensively is is i want to take i want to have hard flats and i want to force you to throw the ball in the middle of the field so i want to i want to force you to throw a corner out i want to force you to throw like a crosser and the reason why is because two reasons and three really this year the first one this year is switch stick because with switch stick and how good switch stick is if i'm seeing that you're doing that every single time i can just easily take that away um, another reason why this is really effective though is if if you're blitz right if i give up the layup throws it doesn't matter if i have the best blitz in the world it'll never get home in time uh, to be able to to do anything to take that away so it helps with that timing, back to that timing thing and back to why sending a blitz is is important pretty much every single year um, is, because of, is because of some of the things that I'm saying. So those are all important reasons uh, as to why, you know, I kind of play defense as I play it. And we want to try to get you into third and fourth and longs basically is the idea. So we – and again, the make them work piece, which is – not giving up layups, not giving up three-pointers. I actually do think this year's game, as much as I don't really like zone logic and I don't like what they did with, with coverage this year, I don't really even like what they did with blitzing this year, I don't like defense as a whole this year, this is probably the first year of defense I've ever played where I feel like you can consistently force your opponent, if you play defense the right way, you can force your opponent to, to have to work more so than most Maddens that I can remember. I mean, the last Madden that I really believe you could do this is Madden 21, which I would consider to be the last 
competitive defensive game where you were seeing like 14 to 6, 21 to 17 scores. You know, now I feel like you're seeing, you know, much, much bigger scoring outputs. So, in general, um, that is that's one of the things as far as as far as making the defense work that I wanted to kind of cover or making the I'm sorry, making the offense work. And in this year's game, I think send four pressure is, is key. You want to you want to kind of send four, keep them in the pocket. Don't let them scramble so they can buy extra time make them have to matriculate the ball down the field. Now, what's crazy about that is that is also the same mentality behind a lot of the defensive shifts that you're seeing in in the real NFL, okay? So that's another little component that I think is important to, to, to talk about. So we've talked about – We've talked about having a good blitz, making every single defense you run look identical, and then we've also talked about making them work. One of the other things that I do think is really important to touch on, especially this year, is I guess just understanding understanding switch stick and understanding what switch stick allows you to do. What switch stick allows you to do is it allows you to basically switch onto any defender pretty much at any point in the play. But the the more, like, I guess, bigger picture thing it allows you to do is it allows you to, like, cut off some of those bigger hitting routes, like crossers, corners, things of that nature, without actually having to have it covered. So you don't really ever have to cover any of those routes. You can just switch stick to it and take it away. Um, now, that's obviously going to leave uh, other things open, so you need to be aware of that. But... But in general, you know, switch sticking is is the best defensive tactic in this game for a reason, okay? The last thing that I wanted to say as far as, like, understanding defense and building a good defense is understanding how to take away the most effective thing in the offense's toolkit. This year, that seems to be uh, seam streaks. That seems to be the main thing that – that you want – I was kind of anticipating a switch stick there on the right. That seems to be kind of the main thing that you want to take away this year is you really want to take away these seam streaks because if you don't take away these seam streaks, it's it's almost too easy, um, too easy to play offense, okay? So you want to try to consistently take away those seam streaks. And so within your core defensive structure, this is, in my opinion, the biggest weakness of a defense like double mug. The biggest weakness of a defense like double mug – is it's not that great against seam streaks, right? Because of where you have to use her and kind of the just the, the defensive structure as a whole, it's kind of it's kind of susceptible to seam streaks, which is the most effective tactic in this game offensively. So that is um, that's another element of of kind of de- defensively what we want to look at. Another big thing that we didn't quite under or we didn't quite talk about is understanding like anticipating and kind of timing almost like when to change the picture and what to change the picture to. So you don't have to change that post snap picture a ton. You can actually get by with making, and I've seen it, a lot of really good comp Madden players, they don't actually make as many adjustments as you would think. They play really simple um, defensively, especially this year with the power of switch stick. But when they do make that adjustment, it's normally in a key situation, a key down in distance, and it's normally to solve a specific problem, such as an RPO. They're consistently hitting you with an RPO, or maybe they're hitting you with a, you know, a corner route or something like that. It's consistently trying to stop some of these like basic things. So you don't, you don't have to stop everything every play, right? That's like a super big point. You don't have to stop everything every single play, right? You want to kind of pick your spots. And again, trust your system in the sense that offense has notoriously, and I've seen it time and time again, some of the best passers in Madden history, they will throw picks. They will throw picks. I promise you they will anticipate something. It won't happen. They will make mistakes. It's very rare that you find – uh, it's very rare that you see even the best passers in the world have a perfect game, right? Every now and then, totally happens. But very rarely, especially if you're putting good defense on the field, and what I mean by good defense, I mean good defense that covers 
that covers the main things. You don't ever want to try to over over adjust, which is one of the biggest things that I think I've been guilty of in the past. And I think a lot of people have been uh, kind of guilty of in the past, to be honest. So that's one of the biggest things, guys, is, is you don't need to over adjust. There's never really a, you know, very rarely do you ever, ever need to over adjust. Now, he keeps running this RPO, so I should have actually put a, a, a flat over there. But those are some of my big, my big tips for playing good defense in Madden. Um, I do feel like this is something that I'm going to try something here. I don't know if this will work. I'm going to try man this guy up, see if this blitz still comes in. I think it will. There we go. Throws right at the deep half, and he'll catch it because this game's awesome. Oh, that should have been interception number. Uh, I've been actually playing good defense this game, so I'm kind of kind of happy with that. But that didn't work out too well for us. All right. So, um, so again, just putting good adjustments on the field consistently, making them work, kind of like, kind of, you, know, you see, like right there, using switch stick to your advantage is really key. Um, I can't stress that enough either. Understanding, like, we're talking a lot, and this is one of the more underrated things, and you'll hear like real NFL coaches talk about this. The idea of like angles is really something that uh, that you'll hear. I mean, I'm actually going to try to over adjust a little bit here and try to take this away because I'm going he's throwing this RPO every time. He might not. Let me um, let me actually go man on that left side like that. I don't know how I don't know what just happened to my play. Let's take a look at this in in the uh, in the clips because this makes no sense. So I I manned him up and he just like uh oh, that's kind of frustrating. I don't know what just happened. That's 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 and that's what I guess you get for over adjusting. Like the one time all game I over adjust, I give up a touchdown. So that's there you go. All right before half, perfect. Worst timing ever to do that. Really bad. All right, so we got five seconds left. We'll see if we can score here. Um, but situational football, true. Seriously, it's like that's a thing in real life. That's a thing in Madden. Understanding the situation, like I shouldn't have over adjusted. I didn't need to. I could have held a three. That would have been smarter, you know. But I got super aggressive and I paid for, paid the price for it. So it's things like that that I see constantly. It's not just you know, like I see it all the time, and I've seen it in myself, and I've I'm honestly. I'm kind of starting to see, like, why you – this is why you see the best players in the world, they don't really over-adjust, right, very rarely. Now, of the best players in the world, a lot of them play different than one another. Some of them play more aggressive. Some of them play more passive. The biggest thing to understand, though, is – they're, when whenever they adjust to something, it doesn't normally mean that if they don't, if if the other per person doesn't happen to call that play, that it's going to be a touchdown no matter what, right? It's normally like a good. It's it's like having a base defense and then adjusting within the logic of that base defense. That's kind of the un underrated thing that I feel like you see a lot that really doesn't doesn't really get talked about or understood. So you have your base setup, and you're just making these slight tweaks within that base setup to kind of adjust to you know whatever it is that you see. So those are some some different examples of of how you could do that. I wonder if I can throw that. That was a bad throw. I thought my I thought my Tyree Kill would get across the middle a little quicker than he did. So offense is gonna do a good job of letting him back in the game, even though this game. So that was not his, uh, not 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 my best read there. So we'll get to keep modeling <laughs> effective defense. So I mean, you see, like, let me kind of hopefully give you a little bit more here. I might get quick hiked. So this is my base defense, right? Typically. So if you think about it, another thing that is uh, really underrated. And of course, I get inside zoned. When in doubt, just call a run and just pray because that's what he did right there. There's literally no strategy. I mean, that's just just fantastic that that worked for him. Another real underrated thing about defense is understanding where are you vulnerable on every single play, not just like conceptually, not just this one, not just this defensive formation, but I mean truly like where are you actually vulnerable? 
are you vulnerable in the run game? Like, like if you were if you were to draw up the perfect play to beat your defense, what would the play be? Why would you call it, and how would it beat your defense? Those are things that I feel like people need to ask that they really never do um, about their defense. If you understand where you're vulnerable, now you kind of know, like, okay, I know I need to switch it to this because it's something that's going to get open. For example, when I'm playing defense the way that I'm playing defense, I know that the main weakness of the way that I'm playing defense is corner routes. Corner routes are the biggest thing because they're going to get open the fastest, and there's really nothing about my defense that's going to stop a corner route, my base coverage. So I know that if I see a corner route, I need to switch stick onto that. Another example of this would be I know that I'm in a cover three shell, and if he runs this setup, this would bomb my, my defense. So if I ever see, you know, this kind of combo, I need to make sure that I'm, I'm you know, covered against that, right? It's like stuff like that. Most people, they just like, oh, this is a good bunch defense. I'm just going to run this every time they run bunch. But I'm not going to truly understand why it works. And then more importantly than even understanding why it works is understanding what beats it uh, and what, what can attack it. So those are some of my biggest tips for uh, kind of understanding, kind of understanding all that. You can just throw through zones. And you're seeing, like, this is why I don't send five hardly ever. I feel like you just – there's just – I literally feel like everything is open if you send five in this game. I did not mean to do this, but we'll go ahead and rock. We'll cook up a combo. So I read here. I got the tight end. Yep. Oh, I got screamed. I wonder if that pass protection just doesn't work anymore. As it kind of seems like that to me. We're going to full slide. Let's try full sliding to the right. I don't know. Let's see if I can just – let's see. I would love to just call hike here. We'll just ag him. Didn't work. All right, so the offense is kind of selling us here down the road. I think we're just going to punt the ball. Punt the ball, play some good defense. I actually accidentally clicked this, but we'll punt it. See if the defense is going to stop. But he does need eight, so it's not. And my offense is, offense is not moving the ball well. What's crazy is he's pretty much running the same defense I am. It's just – and you're seeing, like, you know, one of the, one of the underrated, like, big things that I've learned over the last year is the goal – like, like, you have to also kind of understand, like, what is your goal of your defense? Like, the big goal of defense is really, if you think about it, it's it's to constrain the space that the offense has to work with. One of the ways that you can constrain the space, even if your defense is terrible, right? Even if your defense is just always getting gashed and it's just not a good defense at the end of the day, one of the easiest ways that you can constrain the space is by forcing them to have to score inside the five, right? I'm actually going to man this up. I can just take this away. I'm probably super good. I'm, I'm honestly spending too much energy trying to adjust to this RPO cheat motion. But 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 seriously, like I, I I'm a big believer in. You know, you don't have to. You know, you don't have to do a ton. You know, kind of let them beat themselves almost. I wish we could tackle. That'd be fantastic. As we're all running in quicksand, that's awesome. I'm I'm so glad that we we he he figured out how to run the ball. I think the run got buffed in the most recent patch. I'm gonna use her this safety here, like so. Let's go purple. A hook curl. Everything's guarded. Yep. You're gonna have to get another stop. All right. Hopefully the offense will not will not let us down again because this is ridiculous. That <laughs> he's run. He's just running the ball, and I uh, it's frustrating because the run. I actually think the run did get a patch. Like it got in, it got improved because I just feel like I just feel like I get gashed now sometimes on dollar where before I was really never getting gashed. Now I feel like I actually have to try to stop the run. You're seeing, like, I go as far as not – I'm, like, legitimately trying not to move my user, um, which is kind of a big thing for me. All right, so let's just see if we can just block the running back here and just get get this dealt with so we can pass. 
there's your seam streaks. That's what I was saying. If if they're consistently giving up a seam streak, you it's like here's the thing. In order for me to be able to defend a lot of things, I can't give up the main thing, right? It's the whole adage of make your opponent play left-handed. And there's a general consensus, unless they're really doing a good job of not attacking the seams, there's a general consensus in this year's game that you've got to take away seam streaks to even have a chance at a stop. So it's kind of that idea. It's like, what is the best thing that this formation does? What is the best thing that this player does? What is the main couple things that if we stop these two or three things, we're going to have a shot. So in my opinion, especially this year, if, we, if, if, you're, if your defense is able to consistently defend the seam area of the field and consistently able to not give up one play touchdowns, you're going to have a decent shot at playing good defense, right? Those are like my two big things. Um, and I think every year there's there is that like last year I'm trying to remember what I I'm trying to even remember what last year you would say what are the couple things that you know you have to be able to stop one of them was RPOs because RPOs were really good last year like they were super powerful so RPOs was one of the one of the things that you like if you weren't able to stop it was just GGs like there wasn't anything else to talk about I mean the game was basically over. So you just got to figure out what that is. I'll think about the rest of them in a minute, but let's see if we can cook up a dot here. Just got the running back flat. I also think this year's game is unique in the sense that the check downs are really good. So all like I like to have a seam streak and a drag on almost every play that I run because I really think drags are really good this year. So, for example, we go verticals here. Let me actually try to block the running back here. Getting screamed at. I have the drag open. I don't know how that came in. Um, but anywho, so so that's that's a big piece, I think, of defense. I'm telling you, something as simple as like this, like this should be a really good combo. And you see how I can just take that. And look how many yards they give up underneath now. I mean, that's like 11 yards. Now I know he's dropping everybody back, just trying to get, you know, a good play. But – I'm telling you guys, the 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 checkdowns are really good this year, and and basically it's it's a lot of different types of high low reads. It really is a lot of different types of high low reads. I don't know about this combo. We'll just call it. I have the corner. Good read. There we go. Offense didn't let us down that bad. <laughs> it kind of let us down big time though throughout the game. So. Anyway, those are some of my thoughts um, in terms of like what, what makes a defense good is that it has the ability to send pressure, that you can make your blitzes and your coverages. And, and I would love to make the run defense. Sometimes the run defense is the one where it's like if there was one that doesn't, isn't going to be able to look exactly the identical, sometimes you do need like a unique alignment to stop a specific run. But in general, I want to stop like the majority of runs from my base defense, right? I want to have a defense that's able to do that. And I want to, I, there's not all, so by, by that criteria, it's, you know, there's not a ton of real, I would, you know, what I would consider like really good defenses, if you think about it. There's really not a, a ton of like really, really, really good um, defenses. I can't believe we ran the ball right there. I, and silly me pass committed again. One of the things you're starting to see in the real NFL too that I did want to talk about, it's like a, it's a mindset shift. It used to be in, in the real NFL that they would basically say, if you can't stop the run, you can't play defense. While that is objectively kind of true, like when you need to stop the run, you need to be able to stop the run. What NFL defenses are doing right now that is really uh, causing the, a significant decrease in the ability to score is they're they're not um, they're not stopping the run. They're kind of conceding, honestly, like three, five, six, seven yard runs because their theory is again it's going to make you have to take longer drives. It's going to have to it's going you're going to have to be basically perfect in terms of how you how you do it. 
And so because of that, we don't think you're going to be perfect every time. And so that's why ultimately, you know, we're not doing that. In Madden, it's kind of the same thing. And then ultimately in Madden, we're also kind of banking on our blitz getting home once, then making a bad read, something like that. So those are my biggest, biggest pieces of advice for playing good defense in Madden. 